The Village People still has one of the most outstanding images in pop culture. Created in 1977 in New York by the producers Jack Morelli and Harry Bellolo, their members gave voice to colossal hits such as Go West, Macho Man, and YMCA. They sold around 100 million albums, and at the height of their fame, their lead singer Victor Willis decided to leave the group. This was just before the disco music decay and the end of their success. In the years that followed, the remaining members continued to tour under the Village People name, although the members were frequently replaced. The group witnessed many difficulties, such as the arrest of their former lead singer on drug-related charges and many fights over royalties and copyrights. The story of the village people begins with Jack Morali, a Frenchman who sold records at Orly Airport while trying to make a career as an orchestra musician in Paris. He had a difficult childhood while living in Casablanca, Morocco, where he had to deal not only with his homosexuality, but with a mother who always wanted a girl and therefore maintained a distant relationship with him. In 1975, at the age of 28, Jack met the producer Harry Bololo in Paris. Harry proposed that they should spend some time in the United States, and the timing could not have been better. After the petroleum crisis of 1973, the subsequent economic recession and the withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam, a new feeling emerged in the country. The discos became an escape route for society at the time. This hobby that freed millions of people from the problems and afflictions of the real world was also a lucrative business. Jock and Henry then decided to launch themselves into the business. That is when they created the Richie family, a female trio that had some hits like Brazil and the best disco in town. However, they wanted more. In 1977, while walking through Greenwich Village, they spotted a 20-year-old dancer in a costume outside the gay nightclub Anvil. The young man was Philippi Rose. That scene left them intrigued, but when they entered the place, they realized what was going on. That night, a costume party was taking place. That is when an inspiration came. Using the stereotypes of the homosexual collective of that New York neighborhood, as well as the manly characters of the Finnish erotic comic illustrator Tom of Finland, the producers began to elaborate a new project. In the spring of 1977, they released the four-track Village People mini-album on Casablanca Records. To everyone's surprise, the self-titled album was the Village People's debut studio album and sold over 100,000 copies in just a few weeks. In the summer of that year, in gay clubs across the United States, the hit San Francisco, You've Got Me, in Hollywood, Everybody's a Star, and Fire Island play it to exhaustion. The titles precisely refer to places in the United States with a fancy atmosphere. By the autumn of 1977, Jack had found the sound that would characterize the group. Intense male choirs repeating short phrases over an irresistible symphonic backing. But he urgently needed to find someone to perform it. Besides releasing their albums, the label thought that a concert with them could be a gold mine. The first chosen were three of the singers who participated in the mini-album Village People, the actor Victor Willis, the dancer Philippi Rose and musician Alex Briley. The other three came from auditions, dancers Randy Jones and David Hodo, along with toll booth operator Glenn Hughes. To populate this village, Jack Morelli placed ads in music trade magazines, which read Macho Types Wanted, Must Dance and Have a Mustache. And that's how David Hodo and Glenn Hughes joined them. The group eccentric look caught the attention of everyone. Aside from their exaggerated look, there's one thing they did cleverly well, designing six singles that evoked masculinity. One for each stratum of the gay community. Philippi Rose as an Indian, Alex Briley as a soldier, Victor Willis as a police officer, Rennie Jones as a cowboy, David Hodo as a construction worker, and Glenn Hughes as a leather man biker. Yeah. 
with the group members chosen, they began to work on their second studio album, Macho Man. On February 21st, 1978, they debuted at 2001 Brooklyn's Odyssey nightclub, where John Travolta danced in the movie Saturday Night Fever. The heterosexual audience loved it. That show was a demonstration that the village people were destined to succeed beyond the gay public. Macho Man was a hit in the summer of 1978 and became the group's first song to appear on the Billboard chart. And, far from being recognized only among disco music lovers, they managed to get in TV shows watched by millions of viewers, like The Mary Griffin Show. However, as the group's popularity grew, their producer Jack Morelli became more demanding. Everything had to be perfect. He demanded more rehearsals, more touring, more sacrifices. It was as David Hodo said in a 2014 interview with the Pop Matters website. It had been four years. I was just exhausted. Our producers didn't know when to pull back. There was a time when you could see village people twice a week on TV. Even we were like, again? It was the Bob Hope special, the Tim Conway special. It was oversaturation. It just didn't stop. I had no friends left. Everyone I knew in New York had totally forgotten about me. I wanted to have some kind of life. We had no life. Our suitcases were our homes. I was simply tired of the exhausting traveling, the jet lag, the very unglamorous life of being in such a popular group. Glamour is only in the eyes of the audience, who has no idea of what you have just gone through to be able to entertain them. Randy Jones, the cowboy, on said to a British television program that he couldn't keep up with the rehearsals, recordings and tireless travel, and claims that that was why he ended up leaving the group in 1981. In the fall of 1978, they further consolidated their legacy when they released YMCA, which became number two in the US and number one in England. Although the title of the album that included it might give clues to where the lyrics were going, the media analyzed the song and suggested that it had a double meaning. YMCA stands for Young Men's Christian Association, commonly associated with the club that often provides temporary housing for homeless men. Men. The village people sing about the association as a place where you can spend time together with all the boys. It is implied that this is more of a hidden place to gather uncommitted young people so they can leave their worries and problems behind. Although the lyrics do not contain specific gay references, the song has become an anthem for the LGBT community. In 2008, David Hodo, the construction worker, told Spin magazine that the song certainly had a gay origin, adding that the first Village People album was the gayest album of all time. I mean, look at us, we were a gay group. So, was the song written to celebrate gay men at the YMCA? Yes! Absolutely, and gay people love it. On the other hand, the vocalist Victor Willis, who wrote the song with producer Jacques Morelli, stated that his inspiration behind YMCA did not come from the LGBT community. According to an interview with News Corp Australia in July 2017, I wrote it about hanging out in urban neighborhoods in my youth. You can hang out with all the boys was a term about me and my friends playing basketball at the Y, but I wanted to write a song that could fit anyone's lifestyle. I'm happy the gay community adopted it as their anthem. I have no qualms with that. Not only YMCA had this double meaning problem, the song In the Navy deserves special attention too. This song is their remarkable success from 1979, presented in their fourth studio album, Go West. As surreal as it sounds, an advertising company responsible for the US Navy's budget called one of the village people's producers, proposing an advertisement with the song. Recruitment data was decreasing, so they thought that this way younger people could enter the army. The video for In the Navy was recorded in San Diego aboard the USS Reasoner. Within days, the criticism was far from kind. Both the New York Times and the Washington Post accused the Navy of using taxpayer money to fund a questionable ad. The ad never aired. Verses like Where Can You Find Pleasure, Search the World for Treasure, Learn Science, Technology, Where Can You Begin to Make Your Dreams All Come True, On the Land, 
or on the sea, lead to interpretations of all kinds. Although the village people's image reflected the gay culture that emerged from New York clubs in the mid-70s, Victor explained that the songs he wrote were concerned with universal themes rather than specifically targeting LGBT audiences. As the 80s began, the producer Jack Morelli set another goal for the village people, Hollywood. In the summer of 1979, the group interrupted their exhausting touring for a few weeks to participate in Can't Stop the Music, a movie vaguely based on their story. But this production seemed doomed from the beginning. Its director, the actress Nancy Walker, had no behind-the-scenes experience, and a script signed by Carl Allen and Bronte Woodard made no sense. The production failed to attract audiences and ended up raising only $2 million. This may have happened because its release was in 1980, when disco music and the village people were increasingly outdated. To get around the situation, the producer tried a tremendously risky strategy. For 1981's Renaissance album, the village people ditched their costumes and embraced the new romantic look so popular at the time, with tight pants, vests, and heavy makeup rather than mustaches and workman's attire. The noble attempt was totally rejected by the public. The album did not produce any hit singles and stalled at 138 on the Billboard album chart. They had no better luck with their next album, and in 1985, they released their last album. Victor Willis was not only the lead singer of the Village People during their successful years, but he was also one of their songwriters. Along with the group's founders, he wrote over 33 songs, including In the Navy, Go West, and YMCA. The artist left the group without notice in 1980 and was replaced by Ray Simpson. As the popularity of the Village People was no longer the same after he left, Casablanca Records convinced Victor to return, although he only agreed to record for the Fox in a Box album, leaving the group again in 1982. After his time in Village People, Victor got into a lot of trouble with the law. Since 1997, he has only appeared in the press for being related to drugs. In 2006, he was arrested for possession of cocaine and for consuming other products. He was sentenced to three years probation, with a requirement to enter a rehabilitation program. In March 2007, he was arrested again. A woman who claimed to be his girlfriend told the police that he strangled and threatened her with a knife. Despite that, the artist was released and decided to take back control of his musical career. In 2011, he started a lawsuit to recover the rights to his songs, and in 2013, the verdict was in his favor. In the Navy, Go West and YMCA are some of the 33 songs for which the artist recovered the copyright. In an interview with the New York Times, Victor said, I still don't know what I'm going to do with the reclaimed rights. I have a lot of offers from publicity and record companies, but I haven't made any decisions yet. I have learned it over the past years that owning rights gives you a lot of power. You can stop someone from playing your songs if you want, or even object to many of its uses. In fact, he wielded all his power against his former village people comrades. In 2017, he won another lawsuit. The courts awarded the singer the rights to the village people name and image. Back then, a version of the group still occasionally toured around the world. But when Victor won the lawsuit, he ended up firing everyone who sang in the group, including the original members Felipe Rose and Ray Simpson, who replaced him as a police officer after he left the group. With the rights to the songs and the name, Victor Willis decided to form the Village People again, now with new members. Even with criticism about his vocal performance, the artist ensured that his career was back.
Through the 90s and with lineup changes, the village people continued to perform. They recorded songs for films, participated in comedy shows, MTV galas, and gave their classic hit songs like Go West to artists like Pet Shop Boys. Knowing that the group was active at that time, what happened to the original members of the village people? Felipe Rose, Indian chief, outside the village people, had a solo career and his single Trails of Tears was nominated for three NEMI Awards, Native American Music Awards. Until 2017, he was part of the village people, but he was kicked out by Victor Willis. At first, Alex Briley's character was an athlete, but soon he changed it to the well-known and beloved soldier. Born and raised in Harlem, New York, a dark and sad fact about Alex is that his older brother Jonathan is considered the falling man, the guy from the tragic 9-11 photograph that showed the man falling from the World Trade Center during attacks. David Hodo was initially quite skeptical about the group's prospects. Although he was assigned the role of the construction worker, it was his idea to wear the sunglasses that have become a part of the costume. For David, they were a shield against the crowd, as he often felt shy dancing to songs like Macho Man. Rennie Jones was the cowboy of the group. Outside of the village people, he has done a lot of work to highlight the prejudices faced by the LGBT community. In 2004, he held a wedding ceremony with his boyfriend he had been dating for 20 years, Will Gregor, at a nightclub in New York City. In 2017, Rennie released a single called Hard Times, which peaked number 42 on the Billboard Dance Club Songs charts. Few people know the name Glenn Hughes, but many know his village people character, the Leatherman Biker. He became one of the most iconic and enduring figures of the disco era, with his huge horseshoe mustache and trademark leather clothing. Glenn retired from the village people to launch his own cabaret show in 1996. Sadly, he is no longer with us. He died in 2001 from a lung cancer at the age of 50. He was buried in his leather clothes. Jack Morelli wasn't technically a member of the village people, but he's probably the most important person in the group's history. After the end of his heyday, with no record company willing to release his songs, he decided to return to Paris. Unfortunately, he was diagnosed with HIV. His only joy was his lover, Harrod Striegel, who was also HIV positive. Depressed, he decided to hatch a plan to safeguard his inheritance, as he didn't want to leave his family a penny. Knowing his time was running out, in the winter of 1991, he married Herod's mother. He thought this was the only way this man, the one who loved him, could enjoy his fortune. But Harold died before that happened. Jack died on November 15 of the same year, at the age of 44. At his funeral, YMCA was played. The producer built the group out of New York's gay community and club scene in a relatively more conservative decade, when homosexuality was not much discussed or acknowledged. Speaking to the Red Bull Music Academy, the producer Henry Belolo stated that this was a form of defense. We were keen of doing something for LGBT culture because Jack was gay, and I was feeling that an injustice was done to the gay community. Harry Belolo died on August 3, 2019, at his home in Paris at the age of 82. According to San Francisco Chronicle, the cause was pancreatic cancer. I am devastated by the sudden passing of Harry Belolo, who was my original producer, mentor and co-creator of The Village People, said the singer Victor Willis to Rolling Stone magazine. Of all the disco-era groups that burst onto the pop culture radar in the late 70s, there was none more fun and recognizable than the village people. Truly at their peak for at least two years, they made their history at the top, producing a series of catchy and danceable hits. Even more than 40 years later, their songs are still played at any party. Mm -hmm. 